Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today, it's back into War Plan Pacific, our play-by-email challenge with Bonsai, and it is now March 14th, 1943, as the war continues to grind on from our perspective. Uh, this turn, we will begin be beginning the assault on Melbourne. Now, in March of 43, uh, historically, if the Allies would have been assaulting Melbourne, there would have been big problems. Now, in this game, the Japanese can really get out in some places logistically that probably aren't completely realistic. But that being said, uh, it makes for a lot of fun, I think. I think it's a lot of fun, this game. Um, so anyway, let's jump into it. Let's go to the turn report. Carrier Operations Advancement 1944 to the U.S. Now that is huge. Uh, that pops us up a naval air level, I believe, and some other goodies. And we'll go check a peek at that. The Soviet Union gets advancements, which always pisses me off because there's nothing you can do with the Soviet troops. And so you just look at this and you think, oh, well, that looks great. Way to go, guys. Uh, China, Assault Advancement 1941, another really nice thing for us as the Allied player. This makes China, all, well, I don't want to say impossible. Never say that. Certainly not uh, against Bonsai in this game. But it makes it very, very difficult for him to now take China. Uh, our troops are getting better. We're in a great position in China. If we can start chipping away at other places, uh, this this thing could start to you know change very quickly the situation. Uh, but China, we pretty much fought it to a stalemate at this point. Um, but I feel pretty good about it. All right, then we've got fleet, low supplies, cores, no supplies, so on and so forth. We'll get on that when we get on the map uh, and look at our warnings. All right, so let's get off there. And uh, let's go to the combat log for last time and just see what happened. We had partisan activity, of course, up in China. Uh, we had some at Changsha. You can see there's rain on the map here in China. Uh, also, you know, out here in the Chinese center land uh, near Nanking. And then we had some up in India, almost to the Afghani border. Uh, we had some more down here in India. India. Okay. And then down into Vietnam or what became as such. Uh, French Indochina, right? I think at this point. Uh, okay. Ground strike. All right. So now we get into the, the thick of it. Uh, he's ground striking, meaning he's bombing into Canberra. And we've seen this over and over. By the way, look at that. Gosh, that looks pretty, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> that's, that's a lot of our American forces all in one big old ball of wax. Anyway, ground strikes into Canberra. We've seen this over and over. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Then you attack. Uh, he's done that over and over, uh, trying to knock down our effectiveness, not necessarily lose the strength points, but knock down the effectiveness. Uh, he hits there again. Again, you see, oh, okay, we didn't lose anything. Well, that's not the purpose, really. Uh, you have an effectiveness score that goes from 0 to 100. Every time these things get bombed, they do lose some effectiveness, uh, and that's what he's trying to accomplish here. Uh, once again, third air, 15th air, 5th air, uh, he's hitting it over and over and over. 15th air. Now, we're in Canberra, and this is an elite unit. So, I mean, this is as good as we can get in a force into a hex at this point in the game. Uh, the Americans actually are a little behind the British when it comes to uh, ground advancements. But really, uh, as the Allied player, this is about as good as you can do. An elite American unit dug into a level 2, uh, a 30 strength. Uh, there's not there's just nothing more you can do okay and so we hit it every single time as you can see not one strength point was lost now we do have this bomber group that's over the top but that's not really giving us any kind of cap he's just bombing that unmolested there's no place for us to put fighters now ideally you know we would probably have a fighter group in here but you know that that's that's a long ways back where that decision was made uh the current turn partisan activities kind of in the same old places same old spaces all right now then uh, let's continue with the reports and we know the turn reports here forces 
again, he's up to 1633 on the ground now. My golly moly. Uh, we're at, for things we can actually use, we're at about 920, 980. Let's call it about uh, 1100 on the top end, okay? So he's got about 1633. We're at about 1050, maybe 1100. Now the Americans are just cranking out 30 point uh, units every damn turn this time or from here on out so you know we will eventually close this gap but he's got a big we have not bloodied his nose uh, like I would like to do or certainly do do against players that aren't quite this skilled in the air the Americans now have 120 the Chinese have 16 this is the flying tigers 136 186 in the air for the uh, Japanese naval uh, navally, if you want to talk about my belly button, 156 between the Americans and the UK. Uh, the Japanese have 184. The Australians have this little two. They can't go anywhere because the Australians don't have any oil. So it's essentially 156 to 184. As you can see, he's got a lot more merch marines than we do. I've never seen anything like it in this game. The UK, the greatest shipping power maybe in the history of, of the world up to that point in 1943, has no merchant marines left. None. Zero. They've all, <laughs> they're all gone. They can't even get oil uh, from their vast commonwealth. So anyway, it is what it is. Uh, casualties. Well, this is what I was saying. Now, blooding the nose of the Japanese would probably have him up to about, I don't know, 500, 600 land losses at this point. We just haven't gotten there. As a matter of fact, the U.S. isn't too far behind him. And we've, you know, we've just lost forces here, forces there. Uh, the Indian Australia forces being lost, not not too upset about that, uh, but we've lost quite a bit of American forces. The Chinese, we lost 243. That's okay, though, because they did everything. I mean, we couldn't have asked more out of China in this game. Uh, 59 air losses for the U.S. Chinese uh, have lost 18, but have built back some of that with the Flying Tigers. Uh, 78 for the Japanese. We need more there. Uh, naval, uh, UK's lost 20, US 51, much of this at Pearl Harbor. We really haven't lost much after that. I mean, we tried to blockade Suva, and I think we lost a cruiser or something. I mean, we just haven't lost that much on the on the seas uh, yet anyway, but uh, a big Donny Brook is coming, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, 105 Merch Marines out for the UK. Japan has lost 37 naval. I mean, that's just not enough. It's not going to do it. I'm not going to go through all of our units. We'll do that as we go around the map. Sunk ships. The only major ship we've lost is the Prince of Wales. Uh, when you see this and has, you know, people, have, I think YZ has pointed out, whatnot, this probably means you're not being aggressive enough. You know, you should be losing a few ships here and there. Not that you want to, but it means you were at least trying to do something. And I, I think maybe, you know, the turtle shell works when you're playing not a very good player. Or an average, but I don't. I don't want to put. You know, I've played some good players and won. Uh, don't get me wrong. So I don't want. I don't want you to think, hey, if I if you played me online in the Slytherin forums, that I'm I'm saying you're no good. I'm just saying bonsai is on a different level than anybody I've ever played before. That's why I've got him on the channel to whip to whip my butt into shape. Uh, this probably means you're not being aggressive enough, frankly. You should have probably lost a thing or two along the way, knocking him out of uh, disrupting your supply into ports or something. Uh, we just haven't really done that. Um, okay, let's go to deployment. Let's see what we've got. Now, this becomes very important. We need these damn landing ships, and really, we need them this turn. Unfortunately, March 28th, three days... Uh, April 11th, we don't get these until the third turn from now. So not next turn, not the turn after that, it's the turn after that. So any British forces we're going to land is going to have to be at a port that we control. Important to remember and really not an ideal situation. Now we built a lot of these, uh, but you never have enough, it seems. And that's certainly the case here. U.S. also has a little landing ship problem. And we'll get to that as we get over here by Australia. Now, I don't think it's going to slow down our attempt to take Melbourne. But that being said, we've got a little bit of a landing ship problem. Now, we get 20 more in next turn. We also get some Birch Marines. Hey, all right. 
Uh, as you can see down here, we're going to keep getting new uh, carriers. We get a light carrier, the Bella Wood. We also get the Yorktown 2 and the Wasp 2, as the Americans evidently ran out of names in their baby naming book. Um, let's see. We got landing ships coming in, bomber groups, fighter groups. We've already got some of these. We've got the fighter group in this time. Let's go ahead and go deploy this stuff. Get over to the U.S. West Coast. Uh, is the, any of this going to move out this time? I don't actually think it is. Uh, let's go up and see how many for the U.S. We're using 110 out of our 120 transports. We could put through a 10, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, again, landing ship wise, uh, we're not in great shape. All right. So let's go ahead and put that through to Australia, the U.S. 43rd Division. As you can see, we've only got 57 landing craft. That's not great. That means we can only put on, you know, 130 and two tens or a 30 and a 20. We can't put on two big uh, cores, two 30s. We've only got 57. We had some that got destroyed, obviously. Um, yeah, okay, let's do that. And then let's deploy... And let's take the big infantry corps. It says infantry corps small, but it's actually an infantry corps large. We'll set that down in San Francisco. We've also got the 40th division here that can go somewhere. I, you know, I don't know. Tell you what, we'll put it up here by Seattle. It can enjoy the rainfall. Of course, it's raining near Seattle. Uh, they can get some good coffee. This is pre-Starbucks, uh, so I don't know. Um, seventh fighter group. We've got a lot of aircraft back here. We need to start getting them out, but we've got to have places to put them. Uh, so let's put that one in Astoria. Okay, so we've got air everywhere here, uh, but they're 20 points. I mean, we need the transports. Once we land in Australia, a lot of transports will get opened up, but they're going to need somewhere to land, of course. Uh, next time we get another 30. Let's actually rename this core. I don't know why it's called Infantry... Corps Large, Infantry Corps Small. Uh, right. Okay. We'll call this Sixth Corps. I, you know, I don't know. Let's call it Sixth Corps. Good enough. All right. All right. So we got our cores on the map. Is there anything else to deploy? The Brits have nothing. U.S. is done. Soviet Union, China. Australia, we still got that, but no place to put it. Now, it's too bad because uh, that's a tactical group. Okay, I, I thought for a second it was fighters, but it's not. It's a tactical group. Uh, the Canadians, damn you Canadians. Uh, supply trucks, hey, all right. Communist China is going to get some supply trucks. That's fun. Uh, war panel, nothing for the Brits, nothing for the U.S. to do. Uh, we could declare war in the Soviet Union, but I, I would advise against it. Uh, advancements, okay. The Brits are getting close on carrier operations themselves to go to a 43. Now, again, that doesn't really do much benefit for you until you get to 1944 when the Brits get all of their carriers in. Uh, it's interesting because in Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific, the Brits actually get quite a few carriers in 42 and 43. In this game, you really just don't get anything until 44. I, I would need to read up on, you know, exactly why that is, why there's a discrepancy. I know, obviously, Gary Grigsby is very well researched. I know that Alvaro did a lot of research for this game. So I'm not sure why there's a discrepancy, but you, I, it doesn't matter, I guess, for our purposes here. We don't get any Brit carriers really until 1944. So, okay. I mean, it's nice to have it up to a 43. We'll like to have it up to a 44 when we get those carriers. And fib operations, assault, eh, you know, whatever. Uh, U.S. will go to a 1943 in about a month. So we really need that. That's outstanding because, you know, the U.S. troops are about the least uh, advanced troops right now in the game other than the Chinese. Uh, they're fighting against Japanese troops that are almost certainly at a 1943, but probably at a 1944. So 
they're at a big disadvantage there. The Brits are already at a 43. I think Dan, even the Canadians are at a 43, for God's sake. Uh, so, I, you know, we're just behind. We're almost there. One month to go, and then our troops will really be on a more even footing. Um, fighter bombers. Okay, five days on large warships. These are the new warships that we get. Those pop up to a 42. Uh, warships are the older warships, and uh, they just recently turned over to a 43. Uh, we're going to go full bore on these carrier operations. I mean, we could even pop it up one if we take something out of something else to make those carriers as good as possible. And this is the right time to get that advancement because we're about to get in some carrier scraps. Uh, Long-range submarines, okay, got a long ways to go there. Soviet Union, don't care. China. This is the big one. We went to a 41. Oh, let's look at carrier operations, though, and see what we gained here. Okay, we actually didn't gain an extra air combat. Over time here, we've gained a... This is cumulative. We've gained two. We didn't gain one for this advancement. The next one, we would go up, you know, for a three from the base. Um, we did get tactical up one. Okay. Now, this is air-to-air. -air. Naval air, where we're going after uh, something... Uh, well, let's look. I mean, you get the idea. I think air combat is when you're taking on anything that's land-based. Naval air would be probably carrier-to-carrier -carrier action, right? Anyway, it's a, it's a cumulative three. It's a positive. We got one more point. Anti-sub, we went up uh, a point. Anti-air, we went up. Now, that's huge, obviously. Uh, defense, we went up. A, wow, this is a really good one. We also added to the range. So when that pops up to a 44, look out. All right. We've got the U.S. 3rd Fighter Group over here. Let's just put those through before I forget about it. Now, I don't know if we're going to have any place to put them next turn. I hope we do. Uh, but we may as well have them go through and be ready. Uh, there was nothing left to do there. Convoys, nothing to do in the convoys, unfortunately. The Brits have nothing that they can build, really. I mean, we're at a point where they just don't have enough production that they control to make much of a damn difference. Uh, U.S. has 400. We'll come back to this at the end. Uh, Soviet Union... Nothing. China, nothing. They're doing a lot of upkeep with what production they get. Uh, Australia, okay. Canada, they could potentially do landing ships. And that's what I want. Um, shipyards, logistics. All right. And these go to the Brits, right? Oh, not enough production. Okay. We need what? 25. Okay. So next time we'll try to build another one uh, with the Canadians, the commies. Hey, look at them. I mean, they just keep cranking along. The commies done a great job in this game. Uh, they, they took that area up by what is it? Lan Chow, I think. Yeah. Lan Chow. They just took this and said, come on. Let's go. Let's scrap, you capitalist pigs. And uh, they've, they've held on really nicely. They're behind the river now. They're built. Now, the problem you have with communist forces is they don't really rebuild. So if you lose points on them, uh, and that's something to keep in mind if you play the Japanese side, just keep attacking these because they can't rebuild themselves, really. Uh, and, you know, if you let them get more and newer units, you know, because they do build a few out here, uh, if you allow them to get those, as a matter of fact, let's look at the deploy. Yeah, they do. We did build this headquarters. That's right. They can't build an infantry unit. They just don't have enough. But you are able, logistic wise, but you are able to build another headquarters. You may say, well, what the hell do we need another headquarters for? Uh, well, because it's worth 10 points. I mean, it's, it's a defensive thing to sand in the way. So it's always nice to have that. Um. All right, so we put the air through. We've got nothing else to do here on the U.S. West Coast, I don't believe. I don't know what else we would do, really. 
Uh, I just like to always go down here and make sure I haven't stuffed something away on the bottom of the map to hide it and forgotten about it over time. Now, what do we have back at Pearl Harbor? We have the Hermes, uh, the Valiant, the Revenge, the Repulse, the Remel. You can tell this is all UK, right? Australians actually have a specialty, but we're going to use that on their uh, infantry forces um, actually in Australia. Uh, so you can see this is all UK except for the one Australian ship. And you can't take the Australian ship anywhere because Aust Australia doesn't have any oil. Now, oddly enough, it's sitting at Pearl Harbor, so you would think it could fill up there, but that's just not how the game works. Um, do -do 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 -do, nothing to really do there. Uh, let's look through our warnings. Okay, up here uh, down Malaysia... The, we just put these units in a bad situation. That's my fault. We wasted a uh, landing craft going here. I was hoping to kind of throw him off a little bit. Uh, you know, Bonsai is too good for that. He comes in. He immediately interdicts the ports. And we can't get any supply through here. So now... We're sitting here, we've got no supply sources, and we've got no backup, so luckily those are just 10-point units, but, uh, well, we were kind of throwing poo at the wall, and that's what we got was, was uh, <laughs> I'll just let that play out. Uh, okay, same problem we've got over here in India. Now, the thing in India is we've been resupplying some of this with submarines, and we may continue to do that, but we'll come back to that when we look at India. Uh, you can see all of these guys over here are out of supply. Now, this unit's actually in decent shape, this American unit. It can hold here for a little bit uh, until maybe we can come back over here with something else. I mean, that's what we're going to have to do. We've got this sub over here. He's low on supply. Good to know. Uh, then we got Partisans. Okay, um, where to start? Well, I'm going to think about that for a minute. I'll be right back. You shouldn't even notice. All right, after looking around, I thought, you know what, let's just go to the main event. Uh, we could go up to India or China, but ultimately, I want to see what's going to happen down here. You probably do, too. Uh, first of all, we got to see what all we have down here in this big mass. Well, first of all, on the mainland itself, we've got some Australian troops, you know, uh, bravely hanging on out here. Now, they do have a special, I thought they had a specialty point. Um, okay, well, what do we want to do here? Combat and snow, I don't think that's relevant down here. Infiltrator, well, we're hoping not to retreat. Heavy artillery is good on the offense because it lowers uh, enemy entrenchment. Uh, experience is kind of the one we always go with, I feel like, but for good reason. I mean, really, it makes the most sense. I'm going to put it in this unit. It's the weakest unit uh, of the Australians that we have. So let's go ahead and add that. And that pops it from a 5 to a 6 of combat value. Hey, it's not nothing. Uh, I'll, I'll take it. Do the Americans have a specialty point? No, they don't. Uh, somebody does. I think China maybe does, has another one. But we'll, we'll deal with that when we get up there. Okay, so these guys are just dug in. They're doubly dug in. Uh, we've got an elite unit in Canberra. I mean, <laughs> they've been hanging on here for a while. Obviously, Canberra got bombed into like crazy, but he's still at 79%. So, you know, it's just because it's a really good unit. Um, all right, what do we have out here? Well, first of all, we have four submarines. Those are going to India. We're going to try to do some beachhead supply and keep those units in India alive as long as we can. Okay, we here we've got a small infantry corps. I don't know. Let's name this thing. I hate when they're not named. Uh, let's just name it, uh, I don't know, 12th Corps. Okay, 12th Corps. And there we go, 12th Corps. It's a small corps. It's 20 strength points. It's also got one of our enhancements here. It's got a heavy artillery enhancement. So we definitely want that on the ground uh, because offensively we're going to try to you know, blow out some entrenchment levels. We're going to need it. That leads me to the strategy. Are we going to go to Newcastle or are we going to go to Melbourne? Well, if we look at Newcastle, it's got a small formation. It's a level three port. So it could, you know, it could support up to 60 strength points with no problem. 
the problem is we've got a lot of other follow-on units that need to come here, including British. So really, we need to take Melbourne. We need to take this port. It's a level seven port. Uh, that's where we're going to need to stage and supply out of. So we may as well go for it. Um, now, the problem is he's got a couple of sub-squadrons down here. We don't know how many there, but we know it's one sub-squadron there. We've got to get rid of them. we got to move them. Now, luckily, we've got some destroyers in here. We'll get to that in a second. So we've got the 2020, this 12th Corps. Uh, we've got 30 strength points here in U.S. Second Corps. This needs to get on the ground as well. Now, as you can see, we've only got 57 landing craft. So 30 plus 20. I'm no mathematician. That's 50. That's about it. That's all we could get on. Now, what else do we have? We have uh, three carriers here, the Independence, the Essex, and the Enterprise, okay, in this group. We then have six carriers here, the Hornet, Lexington, Lexington 2, Saratoga, Wasp, and Yorktown. So, I mean, this is a good group, right? And they've got the uh, anti-air screen on a couple of these, the Yorktown and the Wasp. So this is our main carrier task force. This is our secondary one. We'll kind of hide this one behind this one. We'll, we'll put them next to each other, but we'll hide one or the other. We've got another 20 core here. Uh, we've got a group of five ships in this task, or five uh, squads in this task force, divisions, I guess they call them. Uh, these are squads or flotillas. We've got uh, destroyers and light cruisers destroyers. You'll see the anti-sub five. And this is what we got to do to get rid of the subs. We got to use these. Uh, the battleships only have a three anti-sub. Well, that's not going to cut it. Um, okay, so that's got five ships in it. This has 18. Uh, this has got almost all of our battleships. It's got several of the cruisers, and it's got like five destroyer squadrons. Uh, so this will be very important, obviously, to try to knock this out. All right. That's what we've got. Uh, oh, we have a couple of divisions here, too. The 108th Garrison, Strength 10. 27th Division, Strength 10. These are going to have to be follow-oners. Uh, as a matter of fact, we could just move them over here and kind of get them out of the way because they're not going to be coming ashore in the first instance. We've got to try to take Melbourne first. So, I don't know. We'll keep them cloaked. I like to call that cloaked. I don't, you know, is it cloaked? <laughs> they're they're in stealth mode, so we'll put them right over here. They can sit here and wait and see if we take Melbourne. If we don't, they can go back right through the whirly gig. Uh, let's hope that's not a problem. All right, let's bring these three carriers over first because I want them to try to do an air attack. Now, where are we going to put our carriers? I'll probably put this group here. Now, make sure you're in fleet mode. Now, we're not going to be attacking on land this time because we just got we got to land first, establish ourselves. So. Let's bring these three carriers over. You see the subs light up because we can hit them with aircraft, obviously. Let's try to hit this. This is the important one to get rid of. Let's try to hit that. Of course, we don't find it. Okay. Let's bring the main carrier task force over. We'll put that right here. Let's try to hit that again. Ugh. Okay, well, we haven't used our destroyers yet. Let's not get uh, too down too fast. Um, I'm trying to think which one to do first. Let's go to fleet mode there. And let's actually leave this here. All right, naval attack. Hey, we got a hit in there. Two damage. We got to get rid of it. We, get, we need one more point of damage. Um, so let's do this first. Let's take all five destroyers, all right, and we'll bring them right here. Make sure they're in fleet mode. Let's bring them right there. Naval attack. Yay! Okay, there goes the sub. One damage, one sunk. I don't think we took any damage there or there. Okay, great. Fantastic. Uh, okay, we got rid of the sub. Now we're going to wait to bring these over because I'm going to try to get rid of the other sub if we can. Uh, and what I'm going to do, hmm, let's do this. Let's take the one of the cruisers 
and half of the battleships, four, five, then what do we have here? Six. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's take one of the cruisers and five of the battleships, and we'll go right here. Let's try to naval attack there. Okay, we spotted it, which gave us a plus one. That doesn't do us a whole hell of a lot of good. L now let's take the rest of this, a cruiser and six battleships. Whoops, I didn't mean to unzoom there. Keep it up, make sure it's on fleet. Uh, we'll come over here, and then they'll be in good position to bombard this next time. We'll also move the other battleships over here and help the same way. Let's naval attack there, not found. All right, well, we did what we could. Um, unfortunately, we only got one of these out of here. I kind of feel fortunate to get one. Sometimes those subs can be slippery indeed. Uh, now we know where he is. Next time it'd be a little easier, but... We don't have time for that. So let's take the main group here, the main 30 strength group. Let's bring them over here, all right, and land them. There we go. He's still got two points left. He took no damage on the land. Look at that. Yeah, we can get to his air. And that's what I really wanted to see. So we get there, and we also take this hex. So he can only come to the rail here. Is this a small unit? We don't know. We don't know. Well, let's hope it's a small unit because we couldn't get to this hex and we don't have enough landing ships to do it. I don't believe. All right, let's take the artillery group. In some respects, it might not matter because we are just going to absolutely devastate uh, Melbourne next time, assuming his carriers don't come and destroy all of our carriers. It's going to be a fun next turn. All right, let's come right in there. Uh, let's land. We do that, all right, uh, let's let's D that again, land, uh, uh, I hit the wrong button, there we go, right, right click, okay, now let's get on this rail so he can't get anywhere over here, now ultimately we really needed to be in this hex, uh, I guess if I would have taken this out, we could have landed the two tens and put them on the rail, uh, but I really like to have this artillery here, now like I said, we've cut this rail, so I don't know if he could even get all the way to Melbourne. He's got no way of floating anything in here. I don't know. That's a four. It's doubly entrenched, of course, but we're going to have bombardment from the battleships. We're going to have the carriers hitting it. Now, don't forget, we've got this other core over here. Let's go hide this down here in the notch. Put that in stealth mode. Unfortunately, we can't land because we only have seven landing ships. That's why I say you got to constantly be building those. I mean, that's such a shame that we can't do that. All right. Well, the invasion of Southern Australia has begun. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that all plays out. Um, is there anything else I want to do here? I don't think so. Fleet. Yeah, we got to keep that on fleet. We want to keep it on fleet. We've got... You know, these are a little spread out. We'll try to get them together. Now, you can only have six carriers in a group. So I've got this, the secondary group of carriers right behind here. But we've got nine carriers in the area. He would have to bring both of his major carrier task forces down here to, you know, outnumber us. All right, let's go around the way. Now, we do have British troops that have landed over here by Perth. Um... You know, it's interesting. We could try to get out here and bring them down the rail. I mean, I guess we could even take this British group. And bring them into Perth as well. That way we could defend there and we could certainly bring this down the rail. He doesn't have anything that could defend against that, I don't think. Then we could start pushing into like Port Augusta or something. What does he have here? A small formation? Hmm. I'm going to move this out and just open up the rail. Now then, if we took the... We hit rail... Oh, we can't do rail. I think it's because we just opened that, right? Yeah, it says that we can do a rail move, but we can't. Uh, okay, I mean, we're just going to leave that British unit up here. This British unit... Uh, I'm kind of tempted to land here, though. 
Uh, we've got no landing ships until next turn. Next turn, and it's too bad we, or not next turn, it's in a few turns. Uh, it's the Americans that get landing ships next turn. It's always it's always the case with this game. You're just like one turn. If I had those landing ships, we could come land right here and have Melbourne completely surrounded. As is, you know, we did knock the rail here, so we would have to stop here on the rail. I don't know that he can get into Melbourne. I think we have enough to get get that next time. We'll see. We've also destroyed a sub squadron and we've overrun an air unit. We may be able to, you know, he's going to move this obviously, uh, but. That all worked out pretty well. Um, so this is just the partisan. He's moved up here to open up the rail. I'll probably just go try to clear other hexes with that. Uh, the Japanese still have this unit in Geraldton. We have this up in Darwin. Let's scoot back a little bit. I don't think we have any other transports uh, to put British troops on. Yeah, we don't. No, we do. We have 20. What is this, a group of 10? He's a, that's a division. I've got him down to division levels. Yeah, okay. Let's do it. Let's get him on a ship. I don't know. He may eventually help over here. For now, we'll just put him... Let's put him in stealth mode. For now, we'll just put him out here. It's possible he just goes into Perth. Uh, he could also, you know, eventually land over here and help out. Uh, let's scoot up our British forces. Like I said, they will be getting some landing ships. It's just not for a few turns. All right, so we scooted those up. If we go up to India, I don't think there's a whole heck of a lot we can do here. Um, it's showing us no beachhead supply. There's no chance to do beachhead supply here. Even if we go to fleet mode, yeah, we just don't have that. They've only got one day of supply left, so we've got to push them back through. I mean, I, we just don't have a choice. I want to do beachhead supply there, but now we've got those four other squadrons coming through next time. So we'll put these both through to Australia. These guys, I don't think there's anything we could do with this three, this group out here. These guys, the Americans, this unit still has two turns supply. This has two turns supply. The British unit is out. So it's effectively almost done. We'll have to get a sub up here and try to do beachhead supply. So I've got them all here. So if the sub comes there, it can come try to do some beachhead supply. These guys, I don't know. Let's just move them down the coast a little bit. Uh, they're just one further hex away from this guy. That's all that that accomplished. These units over here are dead in the water. Uh, pun completely intended. There's just nothing to do with them. Um, he's blocked off the ports. We're getting no port supply. We don't have a major supply source. So that's that. I mean, there's just nowhere to move these. So they're kind of done for. Oh, I say kind of. They are done for. Out here in China. Now, I had noticed uh, before that we have specialty points available in China. So this unit here, we're going to make elite that's sitting here in Chongqing. That took it from a 6 to a 7. Uh, excellent. Excellent. It's just hanging out here, and that's what we're going to do just overall in China. There's no reason to move anywhere. We're in a very good defensive position. We want all of these units to upgrade to the 1941 uh standard and when they do i think that this is pretty much unbreakable unless unless he says okay we fought this off in india i'm gonna bring all of this over here and start marching through the mountains or something uh that could potentially be a problem okay uh if we scoop back a little bit we've dealt with australia at least the best we could we landed down here by melbourne it's gonna be a lot of fun next turn to see if we can take it uh, nothing going on in China. Not really. We got that uh, specialty, but that was it. Uh, the U.S. has got what? Yeah, we don't have any point or any um, transport ships. We've used them all. They're out there. Now I say used them all. We'll get them back when we drop off things. We don't have landing ships right now, but we will. So the UK has 40 transports, 30 are in use, but zero landing ships. The US, 120 and 120. We're using them all. We've only got seven landing ships. All right, let's build some stuff if we can. 
Uh, the UK, uh, let's do landing ships. How about that? All right. Uh, US, uh, while I'm thinking about it, it's got 400. Let's do one. Let's do two. And let's do three. All right. And then let's go to the air. Uh, fighter bombers, we can go up to a 43. Ah, that costs 350 now. As does the fighter groups. Oh, okay. Well, let's undo one of those landing ships then. So we have 350 left. And let's do 43 fighter bombers. Air superiority group. All right. Uh, so U.S. will have even more planes coming. Now, hopefully, we'll be able to do something with these planes eventually. But we have to start taking some towns. Uh, we'll, we've still got to try to take back New Zealand, for instance. We've got, yeah, there's a lot of a lot to do here. Now, luckily, it's still fairly early in 1943. But he's certainly got us in not the best of positions. Soviet Union, doesn't matter. China, Australia. We already built the uh, landing ships by the Canadians. Uh, Communist China. Yeah, nothing to really do here. They're just kind of upkeeping. Uh, if they could, actually, that's not what they're doing. We built a headquarters, but they've got no logistics uh, left. So there's really, I mean, we, we would have to build something that doesn't have logistics like supply trucks, which strangely enough, don't have logistics points. Sure, I don't know. Let's build another one of those. It may come in helpful uh, at some point. There's nothing else to move back back here i don't believe uh, i don't see why there would be and then out at pearl harbor we've still got some of these brit ships here the hermes the valiant uh they do have 87 oil now this uses eh, it would only use nine oil tell you what let's put it through let's send it to help uh the uk is on the way let's go uh, Australia doesn't have enough oil. Wow, that was a lot of buildup. That's kind of like wah, wah, wah. All right, let's take that out of there. Now the UK, let's go. All right, they're off. They may be able to come in and help out. I think it's just going to be a ship graveyard around Melbourne. It'll be known, uh, the bard shall sing of the Battle of Melbourne. But that'll be next time. Thank you so much for joining me, Strategy Gaming Dojo. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with this game. Let's hope we can come back. I think I think we can make a game of it. We'll see. We'll see. Till next time. I'll talk to you later. Strategy Gaming Dojo out.